Today we're going to talk about the Dijkstra algorithm. It's probably the most famous algorithm in computer science. I'll start off by telling you that in previous years, this is probably the fourth or fifth year that I've taught it, this part of it goes really well. And then when I give you a quiz next period, pretty much everyone will be able to do this. When I asked you to code the algorithm, then it, it doesn't go so well. And I have been, I spent some time this summer trying to figure out why it's so hard for you to take this algorithm and turn it into code. And I've come to the conclusion that the algorithm as it's described is really useful for you for pencil and paper analysis, but it doesn't really lend itself to turning it into code. And I found another algorithm, which I'm going to show you next class, which does essentially the same thing, but presents it in a manner that's more code friendly. Okay, uh, Edgar Dijkstra is probably one of the 10 most famous computer scientists to have ever lived. Uh, he died, I don't know, probably not that long ago, maybe 20, 30 years ago. And um, there are many algorithms named after him. There are actually two or three that are called Dijkstra's algorithm, but when people talk about the Dijkstra's algorithm, this is the one that they're talking about. And what this algorithm does is you have a graph that looks like this. You can see it's weighted and undirected. And you can pick an, uh, some arbitrary uh, vertex. We'll just say A is going to be our starting point. And what Dijkstra's algorithm does, it allows you to calculate the cheapest path from A to every other vertex in the graph. So what's the cheapest way to go from A to B, to go from A to C, A to D, A to E, A to F, all, all of them. And I'm going to walk through this with you. And what we need to do initially is set up this sort of matrix arrangement right here. And we're going to just, all we need to do is be told initially what our starting vertex is going to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that our um, distance from A to A, I'm going to say that's going to be zero because we're already there. And so I'm going to put here, and then I'm going to put a little subscript here to indicate where I came from. In this case, I kind of started at A and finished at A, so the subscript's not very useful, but it'll become more useful later as we go. And as a starting condition, I'm going to say that my distance to all these other nodes is going to be infinity. And I'm going to just mark a subscript of A for all of them because that's the only node that I'm coming from right now. So I haven't actually started the algorithm yet. This is sort of my pre-looping condition. So it's my initial condition for the uh, matrix. So that's my starting condition. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my matrix A, and I'm going to see if I can relax some of these node distances with a smaller number. And looking at the graph that I have there, you see I have direct paths to B, C, and D. And so what I can do right now is I can replace these infinities with these smaller numbers. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say B can now be replaced with an eight. I still came from A. And uh, C can be replaced with a two, I came from A. And then D, uh, I'm gonna replace this with a five. And uh, once again, I came from A. Now, I do not have direct paths from A to any of the other vertices. So E, F, G, and H are gonna remain at infinity here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to say that I'm all done with node A, and so I'm gonna put a box around it. And this is the equivalent of marking it visited in my visited set, okay? So I'm kind of all done with that. Now, the next one I want to look at is I want to look at the smallest number here that doesn't have a box in it, two, and you can see that that is associated with vertex C. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go visit C next, and I'm going to make C my working vertex. I'm going to work, I just finished working A, now I'm going to work C. So I'm going to mark C here, and I'm going to copy down this to A. And I'm going to say that this has also now been visited, and I'm going to mark that kind of with this red box. Now, I should mention that once we visit a vertex like this, everything underneath it is going to be blank because we're never going to visit that vertex again. So now we are at vertex C. Imagine you're physically here. You're physically here. And we are, we're not going to look at A because A has a box around it, but we're going to look at all the other vertexes and see if we can get to them from C cheaper than what we've already uh, been able to get to. So for example, 
from C, can we get to B directly? We cannot. You see that? There's no direct path from C to B. So the best we can still do is this 8, which we had before. So we're going to copy that down. And now the question is, can we get from C to D any cheaper than before? How much does it cost to go from C to D, Mr. Maria? And how much did it cost me to get to C in the first place from A, which was my original? To get from A to C, how much did it cost me to? So what would be the total cost to go from A to uh, choice D through, through C? What would be the cost? Four. And is that cost cheaper than what I've calculated so far? It is, you can see there's a five here right now. So I'm going to relax this node slightly and go from a five to a four here. And I'm gonna mention that I got there from C. These subscripts are gonna be helpful later when I figure out and backtrack what was my path originally. This kind of keeps track of where I came from. So now you can see that I've got this D node, instead of taking five units, I was able to get it down to four because I went from A first over to C, that cost two, and then from C over to D, that cost another two, and this two plus two of four was cheaper than the five that I had before. I'd like you to work with your partner now and see if any of these can be relaxed a little bit. Ms. Teleska, is there a direct path from C to uh, any of the vertices that are on this side here? C to E. Okay, there's a path from C to E, and what would be the cost from C to E, just that part there? Five. And what would be the total cost from A? Seven. And is that cheaper than what we have so far? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna mark this with a seven. Eight. And what subscript should we use here, Ms. Teleska? Yeah, we're working C now, so that's gonna be here. Do we have any other direct paths from C? Ms. Teleska? No. Okay, so these are gonna remain here, like that. And now we're going to, once again, now you notice that 2A has been boxed here under the C node, so we're not gonna write anything here anymore because the C node it has been exhausted and visited, so we're all done with that. We're gonna look at this list and find the lowest number that doesn't have a box in it. You can see that that's gonna be this number right here, the 4C. So that 4C is associated with node D. So that's gonna be the next node I'm going to work now. So I'm gonna come over here and mark that as the next one. And I'm gonna copy this down and I'm gonna put a box around it, which basically is the equivalent of marking it visited. And what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to try to fill in the entire row now to see if you can figure out what number should, should, should I write anything under here? What do you think? No, that's already been marked. And this, this column is not gonna get anything more either. So just try to figure out what goes here, 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 and here. Please do that now. I'm at node D, I'm working node D. I'll give you a hint, it, it cost me four just to arrive at D, it cost me four. So any place I go from D, I'm gonna add the four to get the total cost. Is there a cheaper path to B than the eight that I already have? Mr. Basu, what do you think, sir? Yeah. Okay, what should the new path to B be? 6D. 6D is right, so. I'm going to change this to 6D. And now you just try to figure out the rest here now. Mr. Alvaro, is it, is it cheaper for me to get to E from D instead of what I already have? Okay, uh, what would be the total cost now to get to E, sir? Uh, five. Five. And what subscript letter should I use? Okay, so I'm going to put a 5D here. And uh, while I have you here, sir, what if, how do you feel about node F? Is there a cheaper way to get to node F? Uh, yes. And what would be the cost there? 10D. Okay, that would be 10D. And uh, what about G, sir? 7D, yeah. And what about this uh, H node? What I'd like you to do now is try to figure out what the next row should be. Mr. Orris 5, sir, which uh, number here should we pick for our next row? Five. Okay, and what should we put over here, sir? E. E is going to be our next working node, and I'm going to copy down this 5D here, and I'm going to put a box around it to mark it visited. 
And uh, sir, can you just tell me what would be the other entries here? Does this entry change here? No. Okay. And how about this entry here, sir? Uh, okay, sir, how about this one? Becomes 6E. 6E, and how about here? It's six. That's still infinite, okay. And now you see that we have two numbers that we could use uh, for our next row, and it doesn't matter which one we pick. Okay, so we're going to copy this one down. You, you could have picked either six, it doesn't matter. Yes, sir? Did we run into the like having two of the same because there's um it's not unique weights right if they were uh unique. yeah these weights are not unique well no it's the totals that are not unique oh so they might still they might still so we'll just use the rule that when we have a two that are the same we'll just use the one that's earlier in the alphabet to visit first so since b comes before g we'll go to b first so i'm going to copy this one down and i'm going to put b here and i'm going to Put a box around it to show that it's been visited. And uh, Mila, we're, we're already done with this column and this column and this column and this column. So we only have these three to consider. And uh, are any of them going to get changed here? No. Okay, they're all going to stay the same. And now we're going to take care of that other six here. So we're going to move that one down. And I'm going to put a box around it. And we're gonna mark this as G as our next node that we're visiting. And now the next question is, do either or both of these get updated with cheaper, more relaxed nodes? Yes? Okay, so what would that be here, Mila? What's this one? Um, 8G. 8G, and how about this one? 12G. 12G. Uh, and now uh, we're going to mark this one as the next one. So I'll bring that down. Mark F as the next node to be visited. I'll put a box around it. And here, uh, the only thing that could possibly get further relaxed is this one. Does it get relaxed? It does. What would be the new value here, Mr. Scholson? Very good, sir. So it's going to be 11. And what should I put as the subscript? What's my working node? Look over there. 11F. Okay, 11F. And now finally, uh, we're just gonna mark this one down and we're going to put a box around it. And we know to stop because you can see that every node has been boxed. We visited everything. So the visited list is full, the unvisited list is empty. And so we can terminate the algorithm. So now we have the cost of going to any node from A. The cost from going from A to A is zero, from A to B is six, from A to C is two, A to D is four, E, F, G, and H. What I need you to do now is work with your partner to figure out how can we use these subscripts to figure out what order we have to visit the nodes to get this cost. So for example, if I was going to go from A to H, what would that path look like? I'll give you a hint. You have to work backwards. See if you can figure out how to do that. Okay. I need a volunteer to explain to me how we can use the subscripts to trace the path. Mr. Franovic, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very good. Okay. How about you? I'm doing okay. That's good. Yeah. So, what do you um, think? I got to H. How did I get there? So, you start at the node that you end at. Okay, I'm at H. Right, H. And then you go all the way down to the cheapest boxed one that's been visited. Okay. And you look at the subscript. Okay, so I got to H from F. And now, now, that you now see, I'm at F. You go all the way down to the box subscript and now you have G. Oh, so let me just write this down. So I managed to get to H, node H. I got there from F. I got there from F. Yeah. And then uh, at F, how did I get from it? How did I get to F? You went from G. I went from G to F. And then when I get to, uh, to G, that's uh, over here. How did I reach G? E. E, so I got there from E. And how did I uh, get to E? Uh, you went from D. Okay, I'll just bend it here a little bit. Okay, so I got D. How did I get to D? Uh, you got from uh, C. Okay, and how did I get to C? A. I got there from A. So looking at this graph right here, you can see I went A to C 
to D, to E, to G, to F, to H. So the blue path was the cheapest path that I needed to use to get from A to H. And you can do a similar exercise. For example, if I asked you, for example, how do I get to E? You can just start here and say, well, E I got there from D, D I got from C, C I got from A. You see that this algorithm, it, it gives you the cheapest path from a starting vertex to any vertex, or in this case, every vertex. So that's, that's a good, good algorithm.